So we've won the championship with QPR in year two of our save, but the Premier League is going to be tough. We've only got one striker we think will be good enough, and so we need to recruit others. In this video, we're going to do that, and along the way, we'll use some code I've developed in Python that will help us rank and compare players. If you want to download that code, or the views, tactics, and filters used in this video, you'll find them all in the video description. So how will we assess players? Well, if you look to my previous videos, you'll see that I use a scoring system, uh, which is based on the attributes and calculated in Python. If you look at those videos, you'll see the method I'm using here, where I take data out of the game, load up some Python code, which performs calculations on those data, uh, and then provides me with a view of the squad. Uh, here we have the QPR squad. So for example, when we look at forwards, the scoring system here, this is a player on trial, uh, as mentioned in the previous video. Uh, this is the, the forwards, and there's a score, which is a weighted score based on attributes. Rodriguez at 13.4, I'm fairly confident, is a Premier League level player. This is a player in a different position. But then here, John Jules at 12.4, I don't think is a Premier League ready player. I don't think that John Jules is going to be good enough because if I look at Leicester, which was the club that finished lowest out of the clubs that survived in the Premier League last season, and look at their forwards, you can see that they're clearly better. 12.4 on the scoring system uh, was John Jules. Iheanacho is 14. He's, he's a good player um, by Premier League standards uh, in, in FM. Uh, they've then got a few other players in different positions. And then we get down to Pats and Dakar, who is at 13.1. Dakar is clearly a better player than John Jules is. So what we need to do, what we'll do is we'll put Dakar into our shortlist. So look at the strikers available to us. We'll set the scouting range to world, um, and then we'll load up a filter. Um, this, all these filters are downloadable in the, in the video description uh, for forwards. And, and all this is doing, um, we've got slightly interested in either tying for us on loan uh, or, or for a full transfer. And then you can see it's got baseline for various uh, attributes that are relevant for a forward, uh, notably acceleration and pace. Um, this filter gets us down to 13 players. And then what we can do is the same approach to bring the data out of the game and then run the code on these data and apply the scoring system. Uh, and then we should come up with uh, a ranked list, and, and I'll just do that here. So the ranked list of strikers. So to remember QPR, uh, we've got 13.4 in the club as our best forward. We've got a guy on trial at 13.5, and then we'll step down to 12.4. And we want sort of 30, mid-13s if we can find it. So looking at the players we have here, um, at the top of the list here, we've got an Argentinian 19-year-old called Domina. Um, which uh, is always a, 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 obviously an interesting proposition in, in FM to find uh, young South American players. So, and they're typically a good value for money. So go into the shortlist. Healy at Watford, 30 year old, uh, probably quite expensive, um, but English. Um, so I think um, it'd be a surprise if a player like that would make sense from a value point of view. Um, although, the, the attributes are there, um, good acceleration, good pace, uh, finishing some composure. I, I quite like off the ball and a forward. Um, the track record um, doesn't look fantastic. Um, some goals at championship level, not a very high uh, average rating, but you know, potentially that's a, a player that might be interesting at the right price, probably won't get to the right price. Uh, so put Healy on, onto the shortlist. And then we have Kaufman. I have to say, I've already looked at Kaufman because I've made a few transfers in the run-in uh, to where we are. We're in the middle of the transfer window here. Um, just after contracts expire on the 30th of June, we're here in the first week of July. Uh, I already noticed um, Kaufman, so he's on the shortlist already. And actually, I've, I've, I've made a bid for, for Kaufman. Uh, lots of interest, um, which caused me to think uh, I should get in there quickly. Coming back to this group of forwards, I think... Then it becomes less interesting. Sharif here, a high wage. Um, we probably can't afford wage like that. The sort of wage that we'll want to be paying maximum is sort of 40, 50,000, I think, um, a week coming into the Premier League as a new club. And then beyond that, we've got players that are probably less uh, exciting. So we've not got a huge amount of money for transfers. We're going to need to be frugal. And I don't think just looking at those three forwards we've just seen 
and put into this shortlist together with the guy we've already got on trial uh, and Pat Sindaka, who is the, the guy we're trying to, to beat here. I think we need to try to see, as well as this, if we can find other free transfers and loans that are going to make sense for us. So we'll do exactly the same approach uh, with free transfers and with loans as we've done um, with the profile. So these players might not be ideal profiles as strikers, but as long as they've got decent acceleration and pace, we might consider them. So what I'll do here is just put all the players with expired contracts who fit that description, so there's 2,300 of them. Uh, and then we will do exactly the same approach again, which is to run those through the filter and see if any of them are interesting forwards that we haven't already got on our list. So what I'm doing here, as I said, is explained in a in a, a previous video on my channel that you can look at, but we'll just sort the forwards. Can we see any forwards here that are attractive? So we've got um, Selar and Yakubu as as the higher two. And so if we look at Selar um, and So Selar is, is a player who plays in the Swiss Super League. Um, and he's really a sort of borderline candidate, really, with pace 13. He's widely wanted um, by clubs. There's a club that's coming up to the Premier League, Blackburn, I think they come with, up with us. Um, they're sort of interested in the same way that we're sort of interested, but I'm not sure that's a, a wildly exciting uh, player nonetheless into the shortlist and we'll have a look at Yakubu as well and see if uh, if that's a player of interest to us. Um, well, certainly from a physical point of view, that's an attractive player in the Portuguese league where he's played only okay. Um, clearly very good physicals uh, and good finishing. Not quite so good here in the mentals. But let's put uh, Yakubu on the list um and, and see if that's interesting same idea but for loans so we'll just um, search for players who are slightly interested in coming on loan that have got decent pace and acceleration um, and then we'll see if there's anyone there that stands out when we run the scoring system um, and we're looking for loans because we need to be frugal um, and of course loans are a good way to do that um, so here we are looking across all positions, but I'll focus on strikers for players who can come in on loan and make an impact for us or, or perhaps be useful depth. And looking at this, we can see some players that have got scores in the 13s and 14s, so that's promising. Um, and if we go through, I think as well as just looking at this score with these players, because they've not gone through our initial filter, uh, we're going to see um, a few things which might cause us to not go for them so looking at the top guy here okay he's got a really high number um but he's got strength four jump in reach four and he's five foot seven and the way i think we're looking at, he's not got a great personality either so the way that we're looking to play i'm not sure that's a player i'm rushing towards um next player isn't doesn't play in the right position next player again is um is, is archer it's definitely nice it might maybe saves on this but again um a player that probably doesn't have great um, jumping reach and height and I think we're looking for uh, a decent amount of that um, well I think no onto the list might that might be a that might be an option um, and this listed for loan and, and um, let's see yeah okay so that's that that might be an option uh, as a frugal option um, continuing down the list we've got players who would have to position switch to make sense so here is another player that's quite slight. Then we get to Madoki. Madoki is quite um, a bit better on physicals, but doesn't play striker. So what we would need to do, I think, I think adding Madoki to the list is quite an interesting idea. But we would have to accept that at the early part of the season, um, he'd be playing a, a relatively unfamiliar position um, if playing up front for us. But nonetheless, that might be interesting um, and probably worth going onto the list. Um, moving further down here, um, we've got this strike of anti-speed 14. We're about to get to Patrick Bamford, who I probably won't put on the list because of the speed 13. But this guy with speed 14 just about makes 
the list. Um, again, as a, as, a, as a player that could come in on loan for us. So we're just sort of casting around, looking for players to go onto this long list. And then we're going to try to do um, deals that make sense. I think probably the last one on this list are Dingra. There's Kaufman down there who we've already got a bid in for. Um, uh, the last one of this, perhaps uh, a Dingra here. And then also, actually, there's one more um, name that can possibly make the list from this loans group, uh, which is uh, here, Ballard. Ballard, English striker, relatively sensible wages and um, decent physicals. Now, this guy isn't the guy I think we'll, is going to lead the line for us in the Premier League, not least because in his career to date, um, he's made a bunch of substitute appearances in the championship and scored one goal. But if we're looking to loan depth inexpensively, then you know that's that's one thing that we could try to do is is use the system to find players who are relatively inexpensive uh, in a world where we're we're pretty need to be pretty frugal. All right, so we've got all these strikers now into a short list which we've got on the screen here, and what we've got is they're ranked by acceleration in a view which again is available uh, to download in the description which highlights acceleration and then pace finishing dribbling work rate and so on why does it include these attributes uh, in in this order well if you look at this uh, which i've been through in one of my previous videos this is a weighting uh, that was put together uh, by a group of uh, developers who uh, attempted to effectively back solve football manager and figure out which attributes they thought were the most important so yeah we might not agree with this exactly but they say that acceleration is important pace is important being able to finish is important uh, and so on and so on and so uh, this is basically trying to broadly replicate that I don't think you need to be too exact but as we look down the players we can maybe look and see um, which of these attributes they're good at and, and, and maybe weed a few out before we send this off to the scouts so I'm going to go down because the, the ones at the bottom of here are probably the ones most likely to be weeded out. Here was Seller. He was a, a free transfer. He doesn't really have anything uh, in this context. He doesn't look like he's going to be very promising. We'll, let's remove him. Ballard is a potential loan player, uh, which is um, uh, inexpensive. And we, we're trying to be frugal. I think that's probably worth sticking with. Romero, again, same point. Doesn't look like there's anything really a lot there. Healy will probably be expensive. It's good that he's English, but in the context of of these attributes probably one to weed out and i think um in the in a world where there are other players who can include players as a striker i think even though madoaki's got some quite interesting uh, attributes i think the idea of doing a position switch uh, for him is is probably something we don't want to be doing as we try and survive in the premier league so this gives us now one two three four five six seven eight players so i think what we'll do um is we'll send those off um for uh the scouts to look at so before we look at the scout reports for the forwards which have now come in just a reminder on what we're looking for we've got a front three and we've got a guy on the, who can play on the right called rodriguez who we think is of premier league standard but we don't have a guy to play down the middle and we don't have a guy to play down the left so these are the uh, scouting reports that have come back in on the players that we have shortlisted and broadly we think these players are at about the same level as Dakar of Leicester, um, who we see as a kind of benchmark um, or, or slightly better. The scouts somewhat disagree. They think that Dakar might be the same uh, kind of level as, as Correa, Yakubu here, and Dominic, and then the others are a stride behind. Um, and that may well be the case. Um, we use the attribute weighting as well, just as a cross check. And on the attribute weightings, uh, Dakar is towards the bottom list, and the others are slightly ahead neither of these two things are, in, uh, are exact sciences but we have got I guess here a, a group of players from whom we can look to pick to try and guide, find a guy to play down the middle and a guy to play on the left so how do we go with that so so the first idea I think would be that that Correa who has got the best left foot out of all of these players and I'd quite like the left sided forward to have a left foot um, that, that's, that's pretty good um, sort of jumps out so he you know, looks good on this this looks good on this list and um you know with, with 17 pace 16 acceleration okay poor work rate which i don't particularly like uh, but has got a uh, a good good uh, premier league player from the scouts um all of the um hidden attributes look okay um there isn't a problem with a big match or consistency so 
that's a player where hopefully if we can afford him, then great. The problem is we can't really afford him. So if you look at his wage demand, it's it's more like 100,000 a week. I think we want to pay about 50. So, you know, I think that's a player where we're going to have to let his trial go on a bit, uh, possibly come to an end, and then we'll have to see if his wage demands um, come a little bit towards us, because I think we're not going to be able to pay much more than sort of 50, maybe 60 at a push. Uh, so that's Correa. And, and I think if you look down the middle, um, so that's the left-hand side. If you look down the middle, um, the ones that jump out to me, the ones with, with higher jumping reach um, and, and more height, a Kaufman and Yakubu. Yakubu is a bit of a surprise. Uh, has come in with a with a three and a half rating instead of the, the three for Kaufman. If you look at the two players, they're actually quite similar. Uh, if you compare them, uh, and so their their polygons are pretty similar with Yakubu pairing a little bit more um, pace. And if you look at the uh, these ratings, the hidden ratings, you can see that they're, they're pretty similar and they're pretty good. So these two players both look promising and I'd be quite happy with one of them leading the line the other one as the backup. Are they clearly Premier League quality? Well, that remains to be seen. Um, the scouts aren't convinced. Um, but in a world where we've not got enormous amounts of resources, I think those are players we're probably going to look at. If you look at, for example, against, you know, we, we, we've used Patson Dakar as the benchmark, um, we should find that yeah, you know, it's pretty pretty similar um, based on the attributes at least, um, and so I think we've got players who can play down the middle. Um, and come back to this, I think one of the things that we're trying to do here is look for yes players, but also contracts because we don't have enormous amounts of resources. So with Yakubu, we may find that we can get to a relatively let's have a look an expensive contract yet, yeah, so thirty thousand. Um, I think Kaufman was at roughly that kind of level. So maybe uh, there's a position where we can find players um, on, on good contracts. I think the one that we need to look at is, is towards the top. We've got these uh, towards the top here. Domina and Archer are quite promising um, and probably play on the right of a front three. They don't have the same uh, height to play down the middle uh, as the other players we just looked at. Um, but look like players that could play on the right of a front three archer, five for seven, not so sure I like that. Um, but again, similar profiles. Um, and of course, here with the 19 year old South American player, you've always got that potential ability, which is high. Um, but a concern would be the adaptability, which is, which is a hidden rating. We're going to be in a relegation struggle. I'm not sure I'm looking for a player that might be able to deliver the fullest extent of their ability um, to begin with. So I think on these two, um, I might wait here a little bit more also. Um, I think if you look at the player we've got who can play on the right, Rodriguez, uh, Domino is quite a similar player to Rodriguez, but better, more well-rounded. I think depending on how the other um, signings go, we might see whether we add Domino as well a little bit later in the window. Okay, well, we won't be getting Correa. Uh, he's had a bid of 78,000 a week, which he's accepted, which is more than we would have been able to pay. And so we're going to have to go back to the drawing board there. Is going to sign for us is Kaufman. So we've had to allocate an ESC slot because he won't uh, qualify for a work permit. But Kaufman's agreed to sign 1 million fee, 24,000 a week. And if you compare him to uh, the departed now, John Jules, who has moved on to Al Hazem for 7.5 million, we can see that that's a clear upgrade. So pleased with that, we get about 6 million. Uh, net uh, benefit uh, and also I think we're getting to a better player. Not such good news on Yakubu who's decided he wants to play for Empley instead. These are the problems you sometimes face as a, a low reputation club of course having to try to sign uh, players you'll get other clubs come in so it's back to the drawing board there as well. So in the absence of being able to bring in Yakubu or Correa what I've done is with Domina I've um, had a bit accepted and I think moving on to Minna now probably makes sense. Um, what we could try to do with him, I, I mentioned earlier that he looks a bit like Rodriguez but slightly better but one thing that's notable is Rodriguez has got a, something of a left foot so maybe we could have Domino on the right, Rodriguez on the left or at least this would be a decent quality um, depth signing. Might not be perfect but is, 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 is a guy we could go with. If you look at the 
uh, other clubs that are, uh, are interested, they're more attractive propositions. So I think we're going to have to probably bid a little bit strongly here. Um, he wants important player um, eventually. I think what we might do is just say he'll have that now and we're not going to bring someone in. So let's see, what's he want? Okay, let's make it more attractive by reducing here and trying to reduce here. Screen has come up in my inbox. Always happy to see this screen when it comes up because it normally tells me that I'm signing a player for less than they're worth. So fingers crossed that we can get this one over the line and that Newcastle and Leicester don't bid. Okay, so we now have a new best friend. Domin is our main guy now. Let's forget all the points where we sat and thought maybe he might not be adaptable enough. He might be the right guy he's willing to sign which is better than the other guys welcome to the club Domina is with us now with the signings of Kaufman and Domina up front we now have a forward line and something like a starting 11 I'd still like another midfielder and I still like quite a lot more depth but as we progress now towards the end of the window uh, the squad's beginning to take shape so we're almost at the transfer window now and uh, after three games in the Premier League we've won one drawn one and lost one uh, we've been a few more transfers I won't go through uh, all of it super closely, but since we signed uh, Domino, I've brought in Garner in the midfield, uh, defender Medic, um, and another defender uh, left wing back uh, cover low. Then a couple of players on loans from overseas clubs. We've had our two domestic loans already, uh, and so um, the Panzer is depth in midfield. And then Delap as a forward, so um, exactly the same approach to bring Delap in. This is an expensive uh, loan. Um, and, and not especially uh, good value for money, but an English player on loan from a non-domestic club, so it's quite rare to get, and a player that can provide useful depth. I do want one more striker, and so what I'm going to do just before the deadline is is relax the filter because uh, no new players have been coming up. I often wait till the deadline to see if new players will come up in the filters because players might become more interested in joining us. But that hasn't happened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce everything by one point on the filter, except for acceleration and pace, and then run that. Uh, and the the simple logic here is just loosening um, the standards. Uh, although it doesn't necessarily mean the players that will come up will be significantly worse, um, because of course one can be a bit over precise with the individual attributes. But if we look at this filter um what what i saw when i was having a look at players was this guy at the top of the filter from fiorentina here uh and zola and what i can see here is a, a striker okay quite expensive for wage but a left-footed striker very strong on, on physicals and at the top of the list on the filter so that attracted my attention and what we can see here um is that that this player okay we could we could try to buy this player but I, i'm trying to just find some depth here this is just a depth option or a fifth forward we've got three places across the forward line try and sign three forwards and fiorentina is interested to do a loan with this player and so i think we will proceed with that i think um this player will get some minutes um and although it's fairly expensive um i think this is a better option than signing a player that doesn't really fit all the descriptions so we've removed the uh, the, the termination uh, block, and so we'll try and proceed with Anzola here. If we just uh, compare Anzola versus Rodriguez, who's a player in the left-sided forward slot at the moment, he compares pretty favourably. Uh, doesn't provide all the things we're looking for, but looks promising and looks like a player that, that could fit in the team here. Um, the scouts don't give a view on whether it's a Premier League quality player or not, although the scout stars look promising so this is a player we're going to try to pursue as we get close to the deadline here all right so at the end of the transfer window then we find ourselves with a significantly refreshed squad and i've added the scores of the various players on the attribute weighting system that i use and have, and have highlighted in previous videos and if you just quickly compare it against the leicester benchmarks we used it now compares favorably so we go into the season uh, having got through the transfer window and, and attempt to sort of recalibrate the squad to the league that we're in and how do we get on well i've i've simulated forward to the winter transfer window and how do we get on well the answer is we've got on pretty well i've got to say i'm pretty surprised to be uh, in the european places uh, as we get to the 
uh, winter transfer window. It's now Boxing Day in the game. And, and after 17 games in the Premier League, we find ourselves in fourth place. Um, most of the new signings have done either reasonably well or done what we had hoped that they would. So if we look at the players that have, have played the most minutes, um, we can see that some of the players we signed, Domin has been particularly successful as a signing. All of the concerns about adaptability have fallen away entirely. His attributes are on their way up. His average rating is, rating is well over seven and plenty of, of assists and some goals from the right side of the forward line. Um, Garner, who I didn't feature uh, heavily in this video, has done very well in a midfield role. And if we just focus maybe on the on the forwards um, that we brought in um, and just do it by XG per 90, Kaufman's uh, had a successful start to the season. His attributes are on the way up um, and he scores seven goals. I think we would expect more goals um, from, a, from our centre forward uh, in this tactic if we were a stronger team, but seven goals is a decent performance. Um, with the with the quality of players, I know that the the, the place in the league is, is pretty good, but the quality of players is still quite low for the league. And Zola, who we bought to play on the or loaned to play on the left, uh, hasn't been so successful. But you know that's a loan, so that player uh, won't stay with us by the end of the season. Delap has done reasonably well as depth, and then Rodriguez, who uh, we thought would be Premier League quality, has been pretty good, um, but is unhappy, wants more money, and I think he's probably a player that we'll sell and look to upgrade on. Uh, but all in all, it's been a success. Uh, the approach of benchmarking a team and then looking to, to make sure that we're uh, good enough for the league has been successful. Um, what we would do from here is start looking to sell players from here. Uh, now we're safe in the Premier League, uh, sell players, uh, realise funds, and then, and then um, recycle those funds back into a better squad, um, virtuous circle, improvement in reputation, more funds, <clears throat> excuse me, improve the um, training facilities, all that stuff to maximum. Start benchmarking against the teams that feature regularly in Europe and then and then go from there. Um, I hope that's been a helpful video. Um, I hope that uh, gives a decent sense on how you might use um, some sort of coding like Python or something similar um, to quantify players uh, and, and use that in squad building and uh, see you in the next one.